Hi, and welcome to lesson 7 on electromagnetic waves. In the previous two lessons, we have worked hard in deriving Maxwell's equations, and finally it's time to apply them and show that light is in fact an electromagnetic wave. So let's start by reviewing and our understanding of Maxwell's equations. So we derived Maxwell's equations in two very different forms. One was the integral form, and the way how to understand this integral form is that it offers a global view of what is happening with the electric and magnetic field. So here are the four Maxwell's equations. The first two equations tell us about static fields, and they look at fluxes through uh, surfaces. So always remember that we are computing uh, the flux of an electric field through a surface A, some closed surface A, and also flux of the magnetic field through a closed surface A. In the case of the electric field, this flux is actually dependent on the sources of uh, electric fields enclosed within the volume whose surface is A. In particular, it's given by this term here, the total charge of that volume divided by epsilon naught, which I remind you is the permittivity of free space. In the case of a magnetic field, the flux through a closed surface is always zero, much simpler. And uh, Maxwell's third and fourth equation, they tell us about time varying fields. What happens when we introduce uh, fields that are changing in time? And always we are looking at a line integral on the left of the magnetic, of the magnetic field and the electric field, and somehow that's related to the time change of the, of the other field. So the line integral of the electric field is uh, always related to the uh, time change of the magnetic field and vice versa. The other form of Maxwell's equations is the differential form. And this tells us about local view. It gives us local information of what the fields must do in order to satisfy uh, classical physics, classical electrodynamics. And here they are again. And in this case, we are always looking at a point in, in space. And at that point, these are the four equations that electric and magnetic fields must satisfy. So the first two equations tell us about the divergence of the field. And always the divergence of uh, the electric field is again related to uh, sources and sinks of electric fields, so to electric charges and electric charge distributions, which is not surprising because this was the case in the integral form as well. And similarly to the flux of a magnetic field through a surface, its divergence must be equal to zero because there are no magnetic monopoles. Also, uh, Maxwell's third equation relates the curl of uh, the electric field to the change of the magnetic field. And finally, the last uh, Maxwell's equation tells us about the curl of the magnetic field and how that relates to the time-varying uh, electric field. 